Hi everybody, it's Tammy Tetero here. Um, I wanted to shoot a really quick video for you to show how I made the um, scallop border out of wool that we used on today's tutorial. Um, this is really easy to do, and um, but since uh, die cutting with wool using thin dies might be new to you, I thought a video would be helpful. So I'm using the Lovely Edges set of dies. This is part of my new Heartfelt Stitches collection from Crafter's Edge. You can see it includes several different styles of uh, scallops. I love scallops, so I had to have a set of scallops. So the really cool thing about these dies is that even though they're a thin die, they have a deeper blade than most other thin dies. So it means you can cut a wider range of material and more layers than you've been able to with other thin dies. For instance, you can cut six layers of fabric. Um, you can cut two layers of felted wool. You can cut paper, of course, uh, cardstock. And then you can also cut things like cork and felts and wood and thin metal like soda cans. Um, just all kinds of things that really open up your creative possibilities with your dies. So um, I'm using the Crossover 2 machine from Crafter's Edge. If you have a Big Shot, an AccuQuilt, um, or a Spellbinders Platinum machine, you can use these dies. You're going to need to get an adapter. Crafter's Edge has several of these available, and you just go on their site and pick the one that, that works for your machine. So for instance, the 6th and the 8th, these are the ones you would need for the Spellbinders or the Big Shot. You just get one the size depending on what width of machine you have. So when you're cutting with these dies, you have your platform, big platform, your metal cutting plate, your material, your die, and then your clear cutting pad, okay? So to start, I have this long strip of wool, I think it's about 20 inches long, and it's an inch wide. And I'm gonna lay it here on my cutting pad, and I'm gonna lay my die blade side down onto my material. Now I like to start in the, because I'm on a fold, I like to go halfway in the first scallop. You can actually slide it down and do it there, but you may end up with a little gap. So I like to start halfway on that first scallop and place it so that I have plenty of room to work with when attaching to my project and then just a little bit here on the side to cut away. Now, once you've got it placed, you put your cutting pad on top and run it through. You don't want to get you don't want to let this move. So you may find adding some tape is helpful. It's not required, but it's helpful. So this is a uh, purple tape from Thermoweb and I really like it for using with die cutting because it doesn't leave any stickiness behind when you pull it away. So I'm going to run this through. Pull my tape off. And there's my two layers that are cut. Now, I have the rest of this strip. I wanted to cut a longer strip. So I've, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this up. And I'm going to take my die. And I'm going to match the end of that first cut to the end of the die and lay it in place. And I'm gonna do it again where I have about the same amount as before on each side. I'm gonna use tape again. And you wanna make sure that this end is supported with a plate. You don't want it hanging off because if you try to roll that through your machine, it's gonna jam up in there. Lay your plate on top. Send it through. Pull your tape off, and there you go. Now, where you matched it up, you may end up getting just a little piece there where um, it didn't cut, and that's just because of how I placed the die. The cut line didn't match up, so you just take your scissors and snip it away. And here's what you're left with. A really nice long strip that you can use in place of lace or trim or just all kinds of things. So um, hope you found that helpful. 
and uh, you'll be seeing more fun ideas of what to do with these dies soon. Thank you.